Some of you might have watched the video about why I bought a cottage here in Sweden. If you haven't, I'll just pop a link up in the top here for you to watch it and catch up with the reasons and the thinking behind why I did it. What I wanted to do was update you. I've had loads and loads of questions on some of my Swedish cottage videos about how is life going? How is it living in Sweden? And really, I just wanted to update you on where things are at here in 2022. But first, let me start by telling you something I heard once when I was on holiday in Greece. It was about a couple who lived in Athens. They were an older couple with adult children and they lived in a big apartment in Athens. And their son and his family lived in an apartment that was way too small for their growing family. And so what they did, which made ultimate sense, but not in any financial sense, but like in a heart sense, made so much sense, is they just swapped apartments so that older couple who was just the two of them lived in the smaller apartment and the family, the growing family, lived in the larger apartment. And that always struck me as such a courageous thing to do, such a wise thing to do. Why am I telling you this story? Well, before Brexit happened, I looked carefully at whether I could actually come and live here full time. Although I bought the Swedish cottage, at that point, I'd only ever envisaged using it as a holiday cottage, a summer cottage, as probably about 20% of Swedes do. 20% of Swedes own a summer cottage and a good number of them have access to the use of one um, in addition to that. And so I would kind of envisaged using it a bit like that. But Brexit gave us a chance to think differently about what we might do. And I really looked at my finances at the time and gave it a really deep look. And I really thought, although I could afford to live here, I, I love Sweden, but Sweden is an expensive place to live. And I'm not knocking that at all, because what that means is the taxes pay for the most incredible um, services here and response from all the local agencies and stuff. But I just looked because I live in the UK. Tax system in the UK is that the first 12,000 or so pounds of your income is not taxed. And so my financial planning was done with that in mind. So bear in mind that the Swedish tax could be up to 40 or 50 percent of my income. I couldn't see how I could live on 50 percent of what I'd envisaged living on. So when I looked at it, I realised that I couldn't actually afford to live here and be able to afford flights back to see my family in the UK. And so I made the sad decision and it was really um, took a lot of hard thinking that I wasn't going to be able to live here. But my son and his family were in a different position. This is the son who tragically had lost um, their daughter, my granddaughter, which you might remember from that first video. They had an opportunity to come here in the November before Brexit and try out something new, a new life. They'd loved the idea of John Seymour and his self-sufficiency and had always wanted to try it out. Um, as I think I might have mentioned before, my son was brought up his first couple of years in the Falkland Islands where we had a polytunnel and we grew our own veg and stuff like that. And he'd always had a hankering to have his own piece of land. And so with that story in mind of the Greek family, I said, hey, why don't you guys go and just try it out in Sweden before Brexit, before that door shuts and you don't have that opportunity anymore. So long story short, my son and his family, his growing family, I will say, have been living here since November 2020 and they are loving it. So what follows is an update of what the cottage looks like now and how they're getting on. So let's just go and take a look at his garden. Before we take a look at the cottage now, let's take a look to see what it looked like three years ago when I bought it. Here it is on a beautiful summer's day. It's always so peaceful here. As with many Swedish summer homes, it's got a large grassed area which makes it easy to mow and is also handy for parking cars. It took several weeks of hard work to turn this into a productive garden and involved digging beds and removing the tree that not only created shade, but sucked up much needed moisture. Martin planted courgette, that's zucchini if you're American, tomatoes, beans, carrots, peppers, and many other things. I'll list them down below the video. There's also some gooseberries and loads of raspberry canes right at the bottom of the garden. In the front garden, Martin planted sweet corn, tobacco, beans, flower maize and sunflowers. There's also apple and pear trees 
and blueberry and aronia bushes, although the aronia berries were the only ones to fruit this summer as it's only the second season. So I know some of you are going to be disappointed that I'm not living the life out here in Sweden yet, <laughs> but my son and his family are. I'll pop his Instagram link down below if you want to follow um, what he's doing here in Sweden and see his updates. So yes, things didn't turn out how I'd hoped or perhaps expected, but actually that's okay. I'm cool with that. They turned out really incredibly well. <laughs>